Hello and welcome everybody to the second in our series of Open Hand Games, a series where uh, John, Tony and I, or in this case just John and Tony, play a game of Star Wars Unlimited uh, using our hands being open to you, the viewer, and each other at every stage of the game to discuss um, and debate and suggest everything to each other as we go to work through the logic and the decisions that we make so that it's not just another game where you see cards being moved around the screen but you hear about the logic and the thinking and the ideas of why plays are being made and what we could suggest and help each other improve as we go along and also maybe help you pick up some tricks or thoughts or considerations that you might not have thought of before or even to just go into the comments and tell us where we're wrong because everybody loves being told that they're wrong on the internet don't they john yeah well i mean we get told we're wrong a lot so it's, it's about it's about accurate isn't it um Indeed. cool so this is the first time that i've played uh this open hand shenanigans but um it, it did go on a while when i was doing it with tony for this one game because we're talking through a lot more than we normally do but that's that is a feature and not a bug so it, it'll go on as long as it goes on you're running hera blue are you i am indeed yeah Okay, I am also running blue-green, but in a slightly different combination. Okay, and I will have published the deck tech video on the... Mm -hmm. So if you want to see this deck in full details, then there's a deck tech video out on it. It's a variant of the Spectre deck, but we only have two of each Spectre, so it's a little bit unorthodox. Yep, and I'll either publish a link or an image or something to this full uh, loot green deck list either in the video description or somewhere along those lines somewhere for it to be useful for you to refer to if you're interested or maybe one of the comments we'll see how it goes anyway okay you, are you ready i am indeed right so let's roll off for initiative uh would you like to call heads or tail uh, sorry odds or evens for initiative let's do odds okay i've rolled an even number therefore i will start the game with the initiative because I get that choice having won the roll. Um, cool. So the first choice, let's do your first six cards first and then go into mine. What are your opening six cards? Electro Staff, Take Down, Take Down, Jedi Lightsaber, U Wing Reinforcement, and Devotion. Okay, so I've got some reactions to that as an opening hand straight away. What are your reactions? Shit. Yeah, I'd, I'd dump it straight away, and um, there's there's no units you can play on turn one or turn two or anything like that. There's only other things you can do that will affect other units, so that's that's not the greatest hand in the world. No, um, it's very bad. We're gonna we're gonna we're gonna try to ameliorate our language in this one, unlike oh, some of our other videos. Which okay. Is, uh, which so is we're cool. allowed we're allowed one swear like a Marvel movie. Is that it? Uh, well, since this is uh, hopefully one day affiliated with Disney through FFG. Yeah, let's go with that. That'll be cool. Okay. All right. Uh, then that hand was very bad. <laughs> yep. I will. I will draw my six here as well, so that what I draw and decide is not going to be affected by the decisions that we make for John's um, mulliganed uh, hand there. So, do you want okay. to do mine next, or should we go into yours? Yeah, let's go for yours. Okay. So, uh, my opening hand is. Um, what have we got here? We've got a one drop dispatcher, we've got two four drop bright hopes, we've got a spark, we've got a change of heart, and we've got a Luke's lightsaber. Um, hmm, what do you think? I mean, it's not the best, but the dispatcher very early is always nice. Yeah, the dispatcher's solid. It means I can go into a bright hope turn two straight away if I want to. Um, so I've got a turn one and a turn two play. Luke's lightsaber is going to get saved for the leader flip turn realistically. Um, Spark Rebellion playing out of aspect for four cost against you isn't likely uh, the strongest play. This is meant to be played uh, against other decks, really. And Change of Heart is going to be a late game out of aspect play. So not the strong. I'd probably resource these two, which would mean that I'd be going ahead with these four cards here. One of which isn't great, because that would be a second Bright Hope, but Ultimately, it is a playable hand. Um, so if I chose to mulligan now, I think I would be doing so on the risk of taking a hand that is technically playable for the first couple of turns and getting something better or getting something worse. Um, and I think I'm not going to be taking that risk unless you would advise that I do so. No, I think actually having two Bright Hopes early is fine because if you put one out, you're going to shut down me doing any damage to you in space. 
-hmm. If you don't need the other one, you just resource it and move on with the game. If for some yeah, exactly. reason I manage to kill it, which is unlikely with six, you just play it again and just completely shut down space. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I agree with that one. So I think I'm going to be sticking with this one based off that. Um, let's okay. just order those into my hand and resource the two cards. So I'm going to resource and let's see what we've got in your mulligan hand. Um, well, I got Battlefield Marine. I got an Echo Base uh, Defender. You got Guardian. So I... You got Battlefield. You got some solid. You got some solid early game plays there. Absolutely. Yeah. So obviously, I will stick with this. Yeah. Um, what are you thinking? You're going to play. Um, turn one and two. I think I'm going to play the Battlefield Marine because I think he gives me early aggression. Yeah. I'm probably going to play the Base Defender turn two. I'd agree so with that. I'm probably going to have to cards. resource the Guardian you and then play Kanan on four. Second I'd resource. For four resources. It's probably so going quest... to be Zeb because I've, I don't have any other Obi Wans in the deck, but I do have other Zebs in the deck. Yeah. Okay, that's fair enough. So it's probably going to look something like that. So I just, um, I think that I was thinking that knowing what's in your deck, having looked at the deck tech video, you kind of want to play the the ghost at six drop, and having Zeb as an extra specter earlier is maybe the stronger play. Maybe, maybe not. Mm, You've got more a, turns to draw later stuff than if you do than than earlier stuff. I think resourcing the guardian of the wills is the right choice. Yeah. Um, either Zeb or Obi Wan. Yeah, but uh, it's a, it's a it's coin flip, isn't it? Way. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Both are good. Both work well. If you've got um, more Zebs, then yeah, I can see the argument to resourcing Zeb. You've got another couple of turns before you get to having five resources anyway, so you could draw some more stuff. Yeah. Okay. Uh, you going first? So. All right. Well, I've resourced a couple of things. Which two are you resourcing? Uh, yeah, the Guardian, and I think I'll stick with my original plan of Zeb. Okay, right. So, my hand was this. I'm going to pay one resource. I will play the Alliance Dispatcher exactly as planned. Um, and I... Oh, oh, we should, do I draw two cards at the start? Oh, it's been ages since I've done this. Uh, no, you can no, draw we don't. cards in turn no, one. We're done. No, because that's why you start with six. All right. Um... That's my action. Your action? Uh, would be to tap two and play the Battlefield Marine. Um, okay. I'll put my ground units there so they're opposite use. Yep, no worries at all. Um, I am going to pay one and activate Luke Skywalker, who for an action and a resource allows you to put a shield on a unit. Very so nice. I'll put a shield on the Alliance Dispatcher. Of course. Uh, I will take initiative. Okay, I will remove the initiative token off my table and you put yours on there and i will pass because i've got nothing left to do so cool all right next turn okay. let's draw a couple of cards what have i drawn i've drawn another lightsaber and a u-wing reinforcement i've drawn a second king of jerus and a lion's x-wing okay um in terms of resourcing here uh i have there are niche uses for multiple luke's lightsabers um, probably more than there are niche uses for multiple bright hopes. Uh, Ewing reinforcement is a very solid center of cost card, so I think I'll keep that and resource either the lightsaber or the bright hope. Um, not going to give me a lot to do next turn, though, unfortunately. So I'm going to have to hope that I draw a couple of things next turn. I think I'm going to resource a bright hope out of these. Uh, would you be in agreement with that, or would you make a case for one of the other ones? Um, yeah, I mean, the only reason I would resource the Ewing is because you're so far away from it right now. True, but it's also more useful to have than multiple copies of two unique cards. True. Then I'd then do what you said. Okay, cool. Um, what are you thinking about what you're going to resource now? Well, I drew a second Kanan and an X-Wing. Now, I think normally, here's the, here's the interesting million dollar question, I think normally I would probably resource the Kanan because mm -hmm. that gives me something for the space arena, but I know that you've got two bright hopes. Um, mm. Well, one now, but even yep. even then, my alliance X wing can do nothing against a bright hope. Which actually, did this come up when you played against Tony? Then, like, because that surely influences the decision. Yeah, when bit. we talked through these decisions, we we abstracted it so that we were talking through decisions if we didn't know what's in the opponent's hand. 
Because so you think, wouldn't you wouldn't know at this point, really. Yeah, so I think at this point, because I already have Kanan and I can yeah. play him next turn, I think I resource Kanan and take the X Wing just so that I've got some sort of chip damage started in the space arena. Yeah. Or an option for something else to play on turns when you don't have anything else to play in two resources. Having another duplicate of a unique unit is always a good decision potentially yeah. for uh for making something in a resourcing decision. So yeah, that okay. makes perfect sense to me. So, all right, you have the initiative this time. I'm going to spend three then to play okay. my Echo Base Defender four three right. Sentinel. So you're doing that so that I, if I choose to attack with anyone, um, then it's going to have to go into the Sentinel rather than the Battlefield Marine. Correct. Yes, and I'll start okay. doing three damage to you repeatedly. So all I've got on the table is a one cost Alliance Dispatcher, which I'm likely to use the action for to play something at a discount. And if it doesn't, it's only going to do one damage. So the chances of me attacking you in your base of damage with this Dispatcher are pretty slim. But there's always a small chance I might have something like a takedown um, or some other removal card that can just get rid of your Battlefield Marine before it gets to attack and do me damage. Well, that's true, so I suppose. I would advise your first play would probably be to attack with the Battlefield Marine. Yeah, I was thinking that I wanted to get my base defender down and then shield him as soon as possible, but I suppose you're probably right, because it doesn't really matter. If you've got a takedown, you'll just take him down with the shield on anyway. Mm -hmm. um, sure, so yeah, let's attack your base then for three with the okay. Battlefield Marine, because that's good damage that he does. Exactly, well three damage straight off is uh, a bit of a beefcake straight away. So, yeah, that's fair. Um... We already know what I'm going to do. We've seen what I'm going to do. So I'm going to pay the Alliance Dispatcher and my three resources to play a Bright Hope into space. Because I've got nothing, no other choices that I can logically make at this point in the game. I could play a Luke's lightsaber on the Alliance Dispatcher, but that would be a complete waste, uh, especially in a deck where I know you're running blue. So you could easily have things like takedowns or removal cards that can very easily get rid of a one cost uh, unit. So uh, buffing up my Dispatcher is a bit of a risky move at this point however uh, the bright hope does allow me to when played you may return a friendly non-leader ground unit to its owner's hand and if you do draw a card i need cards i've got nothing in my hand that i can play next turn realistically with with any kind of effect whatsoever and the alliance dispatcher is just going to sit there and buff nothing right now it's going to give me no helpful abilities to bring anything back to my hand uh, sorry, play discounted. So I'm going to bring the Dispatcher back to my hand with Bright Hope. Okay. And I'm going to draw a card. And I've drawn a Battlefield Marine, which is going to be really useful to me to play next turn. So that was a good decision to make. Okay. Uh, well, then now <coughs> I'll do my three to put in my Echo Beast Defender. Yep. Um, I've got nothing else to do this turn. I could play Luke, but I've got no resources uh, left to pay for his shield ability. So... I'm going to take the initiative. Okay. So I think I will just happily pass. Yeah? You don't want to put the shield on like you said you were thinking of doing onto this, the um, defender? Do you know, I, I think you're probably right in that I would shield it. The only reason I'm it's, not shielding it's it is... It's up to you. It's, do you think the shield will be more valuable on something else later in the game? I mean, I'm going to bring in a Kanan next turn, which I can shield next turn. So yeah, I think I'm. I think I'm best to save it to put it on the yeah. Kanan. Yeah. Um, playing against a green deck, you've always got to bear in mind the existence of a card called Traitorous, which can steal a unit that costs three or less and take it and bring it to your opponent's side. So, if you're going to buff units, especially against a deck running green, and you don't know what's in that deck, it's always worth considering they might play Traitorous. So if you buff a unit that costs three or less. They could steal it from you. Buffing yeah. a unit costs four or more, they're basically immune to traitorous. So it's a consideration. That's a good advice. Cool. Okay. So draw two cards. Yep. If you're passing, I've I've already taken initiative, so let's passing. do this. All right. Another bloody bright hope. Great. Okay. And it's a hyperspace one. It is a hyperspace one. It's a very, very pretty one. I do like my hyperspaces when I can get them. Um, it's an uncommon, very pretty one, though, so it's not the cheapest in the world. Luke and Resupply are a very pair of very tasty cards. Um, for me, change of heart, I would have to play eight resources. Um, Bright Hope, I could play a lot sooner if this Bright Hope dies, uh, which, frankly, it's not looking likely to do at this point. Um, 
So I could resource either of those quite happily. Uh, I think I'll keep the change of heart because it's got more potential use late game. Um, and I think I'll resource the Bright Hope, but I will swap this pretty hyperspace Bright Hope out for the non-Bright Hope, not non-hyperspace one, just for sake. Okay. Uh, I am going to resource resupply because yep. I'm sitting on Kanan and X-Wing and Obi-Wan, and I'm quite happy to keep all of those. Yeah, you've got I a lot to... of board presence going on. I don't have a lot of board presence going on. You doubling down on board presence seems like a, a sensible play to make. And uh, as much as I could ramp a bit quicker with if I if I played the resupply for the three cost, I think I'd rather just have my four put down Kane and then I got I can start doing like ten damage a turn to you at this point. Yeah, exactly. So that makes least, perfect sense. So and you're going first this time, aren't you? I am. Yes. Right. What am I doing first this turn? Uh, I have nothing in my hand that can affect any of your cards that are in play right now. Um, so if I play something, it'll be playing it to the ground arena, which means it can get killed very quickly and very easily by either of those two cards, uh, which I don't think would be useful. But if you did that, then you wouldn't be killing my base. So, yeah. uh, and this battlefield marine could kill either the either of them if they went into it. So maybe as a delaying action to save it and and play the marine to try and take some of your damage away. Might be the strongest play here. Hmm. The other option would be to just attack with Bright Hope and do two damage, and then you attack with whatever you've got and you're going on. Yeah, I think probably playing the Battlefield Marine might well be the strongest play here. What do you think? I think so, but I think I'm going to ignore it and just hit your base for seven, because I can. Yeah, no, that's perfectly fair. Makes sense. Um, well, I'll pay the two. And play the Battlefield Marine. Um, so I'll just do four damage to your base with Echo Base Defender. Four to base straight away. Yep, get the highest damage one out of the way in case anything happens to him uh, beforehand. That makes perfect sense. Um, because I want to keep this Battlefield Marine alive, um, in case you do choose to go into him, it means I can then attack with him next turn and trade into either of these with him still being alive. I'm going to activate Luke and pay a resource to put a shield on my Battlefield Marine. Very nice. So... Uh, and you, I assume, attack me for another three. I do indeed. Ouch. Solid aggro tactics. I was going to say, it's quick 10 damage off, isn't it? Yeah, straight away. Um, I'm going to attack you for two with the Bright Hope. Sure. Put them on the leader. Whoops. Yeah, it's so good. <laughs> and now I'm going to play four to bring in the only card I can, which would be Kane and Jarus. Jarus, right? Yep. Um, this this isn't a gameplay decision at all, but it's something that I found useful. If you have a Sentinel, I always find it's worth putting it at the top above all the other units, so that there's like this visual representation of it being in the way and protecting. It's just oh, cool. something Good idea. somebody suggested to me once I quite liked. Um, I've got one resource left, uh, so I'm going to pay it and play the Alliance Dispatcher, because why not at this point? It's another unit, and um, yeah, I'm good with that. So I'll shield Kanan? Yep, yeah, cool. There was a good reason for me not to play the Dispatcher, and that could have been I could have taken the initiative guaranteeing that I get to swing the Battlefield Marine before you get to do anything next turn. But I figured you were going to put the shield on Kanan anyway because of that security complex, so that was a bit of a sort of calculated choice there. Okay. Um, okay. Have you got a marker to mark that the security complex's action has been used? I've got a little X we can put on it. Yep, that's the one. Awesome. All right, I will take the initiative. Perfect. I've got nothing left out I want to do this turn. Neither do you, I think. So Nope. Draw two more cards. It's deja vu. Again. Exactly the same. Wow, okay. <laughs> Fair enough. Right, I've drawn some things that I can play this turn, so that's really useful. Because um, I'll be going up to five resources, and that's five resources worth of stuff to play. So I kind of want to keep both of those. Um, which means if I want to keep both of those and play them, then realistically, I'll have to resource a Luke's lightsaber. 
because that's the most redundant out of all the cards left in my hand. So I will resource the Luke Skywalker this time. Yeah. Because Are you going to realistically play that resupply? I'm going to play it. Yeah, because I've got a Luke, an Obi Wan, and a two. Mm-hmm. So if I play the resu- so if I put down a mana mm-hmm. and play the resupply, yep, I can bring Hera in this turn. Yep, and you've got a lot of board presence, so that seems reasonable. And okay. Having multiple loops can be useful, because while he's really, really powerful, um, he's not too difficult to get rid of. So being able to play a loop and then play another loop and just like do a whole load of, of killing is, is nice and useful. But to to get your Hera out, that makes perfect sense, so I can't disagree with that. I feel like if I get my Hera out this turn, I can probably get you on less than 10 hit points, and then <laughs> you'll be clinging on... We'll see. Okay, so that's what I'm doing. I'm going to resor- resource Luke. I'm going to take the resupply. Okay. Um, Fair enough. Right. Let's ready up. Okay. I know that you've got some tasty damage on the board. I know that you've got a Sentinel. Um, I know that you've got some things to kill me with fairly solidly. Uh, so I think I need to start getting rid of some of your damage dealing potential toot sweet. So my first action of this turn is going to be to attack with a battlefield marine into your sentinel, yep. doing three damage to the sentinel and losing a shield in return that he had from Luke last turn. Perfect. Okay, so because my action, I'm, I think... 10 hit points down puts me at a significant disadvantage. Will be just to attack your base with mm-hmm. Kanan for four. Four damage takes it down to 16. And I draw, I believe, just the one t- card from the top of my deck. Uh, on attack, you may discard one card from the defender's player's deck. Uh, for each friendly Spectre unit, heal one damage... You've only got one friendly Spectre unit, because yep. that's Kanan. So, are you choosing to do that? You don't have to. Yeah, I'll heal for... No reason why you wouldn't. Yeah, I mean... Alright, you're going to discard a U-Ring Reinforcement. It's a very tasty card. Discard. It's got two icons, so you heal two. Do I go back to 25? Yep. Yeah. Right. Um, what do I want to do next? I want to... Not going to be able to kill either of those with the Alliance Dispatcher, even if he's buffed by the Wing Leader. Um, and the most resilient unit I've got on the board is the Bright Hope right now. So the Wing Leader doesn't give him plus two. Uh, no, he. Oh, it's, it is plus two experience. You're absolutely right. Yeah, I thought it was plus one for some reason. Um, so I could kill the Battlefield Marine with the Alliance Dispatcher and have the battle the Alliance Dispatcher survive. So that is actually a sensible play. Don't know why I was thinking it wasn't. Yeah, let's do that. Cool. I'll spend three um, to play Wing Leader Mm -hmm. and give two experience tokens to my Alliance Dispatcher, making him a 3-4. Okay. I'll take your base with the Battlefield Marine for three. Now, what I really wanted to do was I wanted to flip Hera first. Mm-hmm. attack with her, give the 1 XP token to him, and then attack yep. to get the bonus damage, but I can't do that now because you you're figure the Battlefield Marine is just going to die before you have a chance to do that. Yeah. So, yeah. so I do the 3 damage to your base. Yeah, that's fair. That makes perfect sense. Alright, we'll do that. We'll take the 3 damage. Um, so the question now is that that Battlefield Marine is no longer a threat this turn, so I can kill him whenever I want to. Uh, so my choices here are, do I play the Restored Arc first? Do I attack with the Bright Hope first? You've got five resources, so you're going to be playing something fairly tasty or a couple of other units. Well, I'm going to be playing Resupply for sure, because I, need, I want Hera out this turn. Because of True, but I, I wouldn't know that at this point in the no, game. No, that was your right. Yeah, yeah. Um, so logically, I think the decision that I would make at this point... Um, I can't guarantee that you can't do anything to affect the Bright Hope. So I think I would attack with the Bright Hope to do two damage to base. 
Okay. Because that is the most useful play I've got right now that you can disrupt, I think. Okay, so then in that case, I pay my three mm -hmm. to put resupply into play yep. as a resource. So you've got two resources left and you've got a total of six on the board. So yep. I know that Hera is coming out immediately, or if not immediately, then imminently, which is fine. Uh, what stats does Hera come out at? Because the stats four, are six. there. She's a 4 6. So the Alliance Dispatcher could do 3 damage to her and die, which isn't amazing, but it's better than nothing. Yeah, I mean, uh, arguably, if you then take initiative, you can kill her with the Battlefield Marine, but then you would still take a bunch of damage next turn from Kanan and. True, but it would be getting rid of Hera before she starts putting out loads of synergies on top of things. So i think that is more worth it to me than anything else i think i'll spend a one cost unit to do that because killing her before she starts buffing up the rest of your units is worth more than getting rid of that battlefield marine so i'm going to waste a bit of time by spending two resources to play the other spaceship that's in my hand which is a restore one uh restore dark okay well i guess i'm going to waste a bit of time too by playing two to put an alliance six way into play Okay, that's fair. So, uh, my decision now is, do I take initiative, or do I pass and risk you then taking initiative, but not deploying Hera this turn, having played a, res a resupply specifically to do so? Um, if you take initiative, I've got significantly more board presence than you right now, and I'm going to play Luke next turn. So, I think um, it is a solid decision for me to pass at this point. Okay, so then I will flip her over. Okay. She goes into the ground arena next to yeah, Kanan. And that, that's cool. Um, I will do exactly what I said I was going to do and run the Alliance Dispatcher headfirst into Hera, um, hitting her for three damage and taking four in return, which kills the Dispatcher. Cool. And I consider that a fair trade. She will just attack your base for four then? Okay, which takes me down to nine, which is a very bad place to be. And I'll use her ability to give plus one, plus one to Kanan. Hmm. All right. And uh, it's you can take initiative now. Then. I do indeed take initiative because I have nothing left to do that is of any use right now. Okay. Two cards. All right, let's do this. Are you going to take the game? I've drawn another wing leader and another restored arc. Um, I'm going to be going up to six resources. I'll want to play Luke's lightsaber and probably the wing leader, uh, which will leave me one resource to shield something. But frankly, I need to live. Uh, living is pretty key right now. So um, I think... I'm going to probably have to resource the restored arc because that's the least useful to me should I happen to survive the next turn. Uh, what have you got? Sabine and resupply. Oh, that's, that's a pretty easy choice. Yeah, resupply will go down, Sabine will go into the house. Yeah, you've got no use for the resupply at this point, realistically. Um, so, yeah, I'd do that. All right, let's ready up. I have the initiative. Um, Kanan can hit me for six. Five, 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 five. Oh, is it five? It's only plus one. So five. Yeah. Um, and then the battlefield marine hits me for another three. Yeah. So that is eight damage, which doesn't quite kill me. Um, but that does mean that I need to follow through, and I need to, I need to kill either battlefield marine or Kanan or Hera. Um, and killing battlefield marine would save me three damage. Killing her would save me four damage plus her on attack experience token, so it's a no-brainer. Battlefield Marines going straight to Hera. Yeah, that's what you had to do. I think it's going to leave you on one hit point. Yep, which is fine and a thing. Okay, so uh, I think Kanan will attack your base. Yep. Uh, he is my only Spectre unit, so take five. Okay, which takes and four hit points. Show me discard one card, card, please. It is a Kanan, so, so you get to oh, heal two damage. Cool. 
Yeah, definitely got board control going for you here, um, which is not a problem. Right, what am I going to do? Um, see, the problem is I can't kill Kanan in one go because of his shield, which means, realistically, he's going to be alive to kill me next turn, one way or the other. And all you need to do is take initiative at this point. I think there's nothing I can do at this point in the game. Really? You can't chew through Kanan. I'll tell you what I'm going to do. Mm. Because you've killed Hera, uh -huh. I can play Luke yep. for and give a unit minus six, minus six. What is the wording? Is it when defeated or when a, a leaves play? When a friendly unit was defeated this phase, okay. yep. give that um, enemy Hera unit minus six, defeated. minus six. Yep. So I'll give you Bright Hope minus six, <coughs> minus six, mm -hmm. which potentially frees up the air the passage. The X-Range to yeah. do two more damage and kill me. Yep, absolutely. That is a valid or, play. Or if you put a big unit into play like a Sentinel, I'll play Luke in minus six, minus six it. Yeah. And um, then clear it, kill it with the Battlefield Marine for next turn. Um, well, I can't Sentinel. Um, but knowing that you've got seven resources and that you're a blue deck, there's a good chance you'll be playing a Luke in the resources, which means you can kill the Bright Hope, which means that the Alliance X-Wing is... Um, going to be able to finish me off this turn rather than save me through to next turn. Logically, that means I should play the wing leader here for three and put an experience token on the Bright Hope, which takes it out of being killed range. Oh, very nice. Okay. I hadn't thought that through until you'd mentioned that Luke was a fact um, for a seven-cost hero blue running deck, but he absolutely should be, and you should consider that. And I should have considered that so I guess I attack you with the Battlefield Marine to put you on one. Yep. Um, I mean, sh actually, should I even have done that? Should I just have taken initiative? So I guess if I attack you with Kane the next turn, I win, right? So the, the question comes down to whether or not there's a possibility that I can get rid of Kanan. Um Regardless, uh, Kane has got six hit points, which means he's out of range of a takedown. Um, he, he could be Power of the Dark Side, but you've got two other units there, and Power of the Dark Side is a villain out of aspect card to play anyway. A Vanquish should get rid of him, which would cost me five resources. I've only got three left, so I'm not going to be vanquishing Kanan. So um, unless I can deploy Luke, attack, and play something with Ambush at this time to get into Kanan and try and kill him to bust his shield off, and then hit him with Luke, Kanan's going to live. Um, at which point your Battlefield Marine is going to be able to swing and hit me. So you taking initiative is the single most important thing right now for you yes, in this game. Yes, so I shouldn't have attacked you there, right? Leave you on four and take initiative, or put you on one and take initiative. I feel, I Putting me on one makes me a lot closer to that threshold, so there's definitely value in doing that. Yeah, I think I would put you on one, and then just basically, as much as I want to play a Luke or something, I just... I make this really difficult for you because I can't take an ship now when you're on one hit point, which means any, any swing will kill you. Yeah, literally a single swing, uh, which I can prevent a little bit with Bright Hope, um, but I can't do very much about um, on the two ground units, and I need to be able to kill both of them, and I can only kill one of them. Um, so, yeah, we can see this through, but ultimately the game is yours at this point. Um, Unless I take initiative right now and hope I draw a sentinel and play it first. Mm. That is literally my only hope at life right now. <laughs> okay. I'll There's do it then. There's nothing else I can do that's going to do that. So, yep, I will take initiative. Okay, so in that case then I just pay six to yep. put Obi-Wan into the arena because I'll keep Luke because that gives me some control, yep. I guess, depending on what you play. Obi-Wan just he, you know, is another unit that could swing. So It doesn't, um, it doesn't matter. He, he stops me from killing both things. Uh, no, maybe, maybe he doesn't, but he gives you somebody else to potentially swing into a Sentinel and get rid of the Sentinel beforehand. 
Yeah. Uh, so it saves you and Luke able to hopefully get rid of the Sentinel next turn. Yeah. Um, even if you need to suicide charge your X Wing into my Bright Hope, kill it so that Luke can then do his minus six, minus six rather than a minus three, minus three, then that's that's a perfectly tact- valid tactical play. Yeah. Okay. Draw your two cards. Let's see if you get Sentinel. <laughs> All right. What do I get? I get an R2 and a Sentinel. It's not okay. a big Sentinel, but it is a Sentinel. Um, it's not going to save me because Obi-Wan can kill it in one go. Yeah. Um, it will buy you a turn. Does that help? No, it'll buy me an action. Yeah, that's what I meant. Sorry. At which point, or you could just frankly use takedown on your base defender and then swing into it with that. So keeping the takedown is an absolute mandatory play for you at this point. Yeah, I think so. Uh, but you don't necessarily know that I've got that there, but the, I, I could solidly be playing it. Yeah, there's nothing we can do here. Well cool. done. The game's yours. Yeah, I think I wouldn't have kept the ghost there anyway, just because of the bright hope. Yeah. Um. Well, get, what's what's in your what else is in your hand at the moment? Another. Uh. Well, Luke and Sabine. I don't see. I'd, I'd resource Sabine and keep take down on the ghost. Oh, that's a good point. Yeah, I never considered that. Yeah. But even so, the game's still yours at this point. There's literally nothing I can do. Okay. Cool. Well done. Thank you. Did did the things that I was saying and suggested at any point change how you were playing? Make you think about it or look about it in a different way at all? I think so. I mean, it's kind of nice to actually get all the insights on what's happening, right? Rather than just like... Because sometimes you do feel like you're guessing what the best action might be or the best decision yeah. might be. Um, do you want to go one more? Uh, I can do. I've got the time, if you like. Yes. Then No worries. What we'll do is... Uh, this one will be up as a single video uh, in a couple of days' time. The next one will come out as a single video. So stay tuned for that one, guys. Uh, Does that mean I have to intro the second one all over again? Gah. No, it means you have to intro the second one. I intro yeah. the first one. You'll intro the second one. Cool. Yeah. All right. Thank we'll see you in the next video. Everybody. Cheers.